أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم All the praise and thanks are given to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala The salutation of the Prophet Muhammad صلى الله عليه وسلم For all the Anbiya and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala stand for human guidance Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh We've reached a very important milestone for this month of Ramadan It's the last uh, few days left for this auspicious month And I think it's uh, also a time to reflect uh, when we look at our community around us, we see that it's a different community. Uh, we observe people with self-discipline. Even the smokers don't smoke during the day. So it's an amazing achievement for this month. We find that in the rest of the year, people do not give much attention to the Quran. But we find a great emphasis on, the month, on this month and this time in spending with the Quran. So I think this is a very uh, special time in the year and important for us to reflect on. But what's also important to appreciate is that this month of Ramadan is aimed at developing our taqwa. We've discussed this previously when Allah said, Ya ayyul ladhina amanu, kutibu alaykum as-siyamu kama kutibu ala ladhina min qablikum, la'allakum tattakum. Allah has prescribed this, this fasting for us and is prescribed to those before us, la'allakum tattakum, that we may develop taqwa, that we gain taqwa. And that why, as we've described before, is really this conscious awareness of Allah SWT. And it's not just being aware of Allah SWT, but actually the deterministic choices based on that awareness. What I mean by that is that if you think of this choice not to eat, it's because we've consciously accepted Allah as our authority, we've consciously made the decision not to eat in obedience to Allah SWT. So we've made these choices as rational choices, and therefore we grow in our taqwa in being able to not be aware of Allah not alone, but also to be obedient and to follow His commands. So Alhamdulillah, I think if you look at this month and this 20 days or so that has passed, we as Muslims have done a fantastic job in those parameters. And we have grown our taqwa in that in the sense that we are obedient to Allah and we've shown that. But what I'd like to rather focus on for today is actually to talk, of the, talk about the twin sister of taqwa. And the question is, what is the twin sister, or who is the twin sister of taqwa that we aim to grow? And there's an important piece of the Quran which says, اَعْدِلُوا هُوَ أَقْرَبُوا لِلْتَقْوَى It says, اَعْدِلُوا عَدُلْ هُوَ أَقْرَبُوا لِلْتَقْوَى This adl is nearness to taqwa. When we think of a sibling, we think of someone very close to us. And the closeness of taqwa is اَعْدِلُوا To be just. And it's an important element that I'd like to speak about briefly today. When we think of adl, when we think of justice, and when we think of trying to evaluate ourselves after this 20 days of Ramadan, we're aiming at achieving taqwa. And taqwa is a very difficult thing to, to evaluate and to quantify. When we say we're close to Allah, we remember Allah, it's very difficult to define that person. But when you talk of the concept of justice, it becomes a milestone to assess our progress towards taqwa in this month. So we might have abstained from food, we might have maybe even abstained from bad speech. Uh, we've been more conscious of praying to Allah in this uh, in the dance of Ramadan. But the measurement that I'd like to look at today is that of adl, of that of justice, and that of fairness. And it's very opportune as well, because this is the day, uh, the June 16th celebration in South Africa, the Sharpeville massacre is not I mean, it's, it's uh, in the history of the people that are sitting in this room. Uh, and really spoke about youth, uh, and they're standing up for justice and fairness, and to ensure the freedom that we have today. So when we think of Taq, when we think of the month of Ramadan, we should also use the yardstick of justice to assess how close are we to the sister of Taqwa, how close are we to fairness and justice. And I think that's an important element. So I quoted this ayah, it's part of an ayah, but I'll read you the full ayah. Ya ayyul ladhina amanu, kunu kawamina lillahi shuhada'a bil qist, wa la yajrimannakum shana'anu kawman ala alla ta'adilu, i'idu wa huwa akrabu lil taqwa, wa attaku Allah, inna Allah khabirun bima ta'amaloon. It translates as follows, O you who believe, instruction to every one of us sitting here today, stand out firmly, for Allah as witnesses to fair dealing. And let not the hatred of others to you make you swerve to wrong and depart from justice. Be just that is next to piety. 
بِئْدِلُ هُوَ أَكْرَمُ لِلْتَّقْوَى And fear Allah, for Allah is well acquainted with all that you do. So this verse sets out an important tone, that the requirement for us as believers is to establish and be witnesses to fair dealing, and also to be standard bearers of that justice that's required. And when we look at this month of Ramadan, and two-thirds of this month has been completed, we've undertaken the Taqwa program, we've undertaken this training program, and it's important for us to self-evaluate and re-evaluate how far we progress on the yardstick of justice for this month. But essentially being a Taqwa conscious person implies also having that same level of quality of justice and fairness. And I think when we think of justice, it's not just about fighting in the court of Allah. Justice is a very broad concept and term. And we find an important ayah where Allah SWT reminds us in Surah 4. It begins with, Ya ayyuhal ladhina amunu as well, kunu kawamina bil kisti shuhada'a lillahi. And it continues, and I'll read you the translation. It says, O you who believe, stand out firmly for justice and witness to Allah. Very much like what we read just now. But it continues, even if it's against yourselves, or your parents, or your kin, and whether it be against rich or poor, for Allah can best protect both. Follow not the lust of your hearts, lest you swerve, and if you distort justice or decline to do justice, then the Allah is well acquainted with all that you do. When we think of the standards of justice, and we see the description provided here, how are we supposed to evaluate ourselves? When we look back at the beginning of the month of Ramadan, and we look at this 21st day of Ramadan, have we actually become more conscious of our uh, aspects related to justice and fairness as it relates to, as the verse says, within our own selves, as it relates to our parents and near relatives, and also among rich or poor in our communities? And I'd like to just pause for a moment there. If you think of before Ramadan and you look at now, we've spent a lot of time in investing in reading the Quran, but these verses instruct us importantly to look at justice within ourselves. And I suppose when we think of our personal selves, we have a physical body, we have a spiritual mind. And have we been just to that gift from Allah SWT? When we look at the month of Ramadan, we have exemplified discipline. But the question is, have we protected our bodies? Have we uh, avoided smoking and other harmful things that damage our health? Have we ate in a manner that is respectful to the gift of the body that we receive, have we kept it active and healthy as a trust from Allah. So have we been just our personal physical self as a very basic measure. But when you look at our spiritual aspects as humans, have we harmed our spirit? Have we been spending our time and money on things that have harmed our morality and our dignity? When I say these things, I know anyway in the month of Ramadan we might have achieved a lot of this or failed in something. But we need to bear in mind that at the end of this month, we need to maintain that standard of taqwa and also the standard of justice. More broadly, when you're looking at our parents, have we been fair and just in this month? Have we afforded them the, the respect, the time, and the support that is due to them? And I think it's an important point to reflect on, that as the month progresses, remember taqwa and justice are consistent. And how have we progressed in terms of prioritizing those elements in our lives? And if not, we have 10 days more to make sure that we can achieve and deliver on those expectations. And then the third is relating to our communities at large. In terms of, as Allah well says, whether it be against rich or poor. And I think that is another aspect in terms of the month of Ramadan, in terms of growing not just our taqwa, but our qualities of, of justice. When we look at our neighbors, have we provided them the due respect and kindness? When we look at the people that work for us, or the people to whom we provide a service to, have we been fair, have we been just? And I think even the customers that businesses, businesses serve, have we been fair and honest in our dealings with them? So these are the, the outward qualities that really reflect on aspects related to, to taqwa. Because the NLR has highlighted that it is the, uh, the nearness to, to taqwa is, uh, is injustice. So it's a, it's a tough one to follow in a sense that we've got to critically reevaluate our personal selves, ourselves with those immediately around us in our communities that go around. When we look at the standard of taqwa and we look at the standard of justice and we see the crisis that unfolds 
in the world around us is quite shocking. We look at what's happening with Qatar and looking at what's happening with the Saudi decisions that have been taken. These are Muslims decreed, uh, but yet we find such animosity and antagonism between them. And we find the level of injustice where there's uh, siding towards um, parties that have led uh, destruction in Muslim lands, and that becomes partnerships that they respect over the fellow brethren. And these are lessons for us to look at a broader level, whether it's rich or poor. These are lessons for us to reflect on and to make clear standard judgments in our minds as to where we stand in relation to uh, different uh, forces that exist uh, around us. But I'd like to sort of just focus briefly now on this being the Youth Day, a day to reflect on struggles that were undertaken in Soweto in 1976, where youth stood up for justice, and they stood up to basically protect and defend uh, against what was seen as uh, total injustice and oppression at that point in time. And a lot of people had lost their lives, but yet those lives that were sacrificed achieved greater uh, victories over time. And when you reflect on that, and this specific issue around the youth, it's an important element about successes of society. They are the leaders for the future, but if they do not protect their future today, there will be no future for tomorrow. And there was the important lesson of the Sharpsville Massacre, that these youth undertook the efforts to protect their futures and to give the futures for their wives and children that were to come. And when we think of the stories of youth in the Quran, we've spent the month of Ramadan, I think we should past two-thirds, almost three-quarters of the Qur'an uh, completed in our Tarawis. But there's been many lessons of youth in the Qur'an, and I'd like to just highlight a few of them. It highlights that the youth that we celebrate today is not only of the Sharpul Massacre, but it's of youthful prophets and righteous ones that stood the standards of justice and actually ensured success in the future. We need to look down the line. And the first one is that of the sleepers of the cave. Uh, Surat Kaaf, people love to read it on Friday. It will be worthwhile to open the Quran and read its message. What these uh, sleepers of the cave were, they were actually youngsters that basically stood out against the, the wrongs of that society and they felt threatened and they exiled themselves to a cave. And that's the, where the story comes about, where they were actually ones that were standard bearers of justice. These were the mutakin of their time because they stood up for justice. Another beautiful one is that of Musa al and you know, when you think of Musa and we think of Pharaoh, that's the iconic example of an absolute oppressive force like Pharaoh killing young children to protect his future and ensure that people were subjugated. And yet Musa comes and he speaks against this, this ter uh, Pharaonic character. But who were the ones that actually stood by Musa? And people don't often appreciate this. And it's actually described <coughs> in Surah 10 many uh, Tarawis ago. Uh, well, as one says, but none believed in Musa except some children of his people because of the fear of Pharaoh and his chiefs, lest they should persecute them. And certainly Pharaoh was mighty on the earth and one who transgressed all bounds. It's fascinating that the people that stood by Musa were actually the youngsters. And I think it's important for us to instantly in uh, stimulate within our youth that you really need to protect your future. And the future is based on justice. And another fascinating story is that of the story of Ibrahim It's an iconic character in the Quran. You know, the Prophet says he is the one that follows the footsteps of Ibrahim. But Ibrahim as a youngster was quite a rebellious fellow. And one story relates to his father was in, you know, idol worship, but also carved out these idols. And he basically went out and he destroyed the idols while people were away. And, you know, he left the big one there. And the people came and they seen the idols destroyed. And they said, who has done this to our idols? They say, we recall a youngster by the name of Ibrahim. Call him, let him answer. So we find that this attitude and behavior was characteristic of the prophets of Allah SWT. They, within their youth, were active in making sure that there was a future for all, a better future for all. And Ibrahim al-Islam was another iconic example. But there are many. I mean, if you look at the, the story of Isa al-Islam, the youngster, Yahya, you know, Khudil Kuwa, Khudil Kitab of Kuwa, he held on to the book as a youngster and ensured that the message was carried forward and was amongst the generation of Isa al-Islam. So there are a lot of lessons that we can take out from <coughs> this day of the youth, 
to commemorate these examples. But I think it's important and extremely important for us not just to think of youth as standard bearers of justice, but it's a responsibility on all of us. And coming back to what I had begun with, it's important to appreciate that when we think of the month of Ramadan, it's a month in which that we may gain and develop and grow taqwa, that we be conscious of Allah. Uh, you know, we, we refrain from eating in obedience to the commandments of Allah. But Allah reminds us that the twin sister, to achieve that taqwa, the <coughs> most open and obvious uh, tool to assess a person's taqwa is his standard of justice and fairness. And those are important. Anyway, so fundamentally, be pious, uh, uh, have taqwa in order that you may, uh, have, uh, have justice in order that you may gain closeness to piety of taqwa. And essentially, I think when we're looking at this month of Ramadan, we look back at the 20 days and the 10 days that's still to come. How far have we, as our personalities reflect to the people around us, being be, be people of fairness and justice? And when I say fairness and justice, I'm not only referring to political issues, but fairness and justice in terms of the gifts of our body that we receive, in terms of the family that we have around us, have we been fair and just to them? Have we been kind to them? Have we been fair as well? And I think when we look at our youth as well and our children, are we being fair and just in, in giving them opportunities to play on tablets, etc., and not ensure that they understand the values in which they need to develop to achieve um, the future that we want for tomorrow, inshallah. I'd like to end off just lastly with an important ayah. When we think of this month of Ramadan, there is a spirit that grows within the community in allowing us to bond together and come together and meet one another. But it's important that just this opportunity of growing together needs to remind us of our greater responsibility as communities and as societies. Well, that's what Allah reminds us in Surah 3 where he says, you are the best of people evolved for mankind. And when we think of the, of the behavior in Muslims in the months of Ramadan, it really is outstanding. We have a gift that we cannot, we do not truly appreciate and value. And the verse continues, you are the best of people evolved for mankind, and continue the next element, and joining what is right, forbidding what is wrong, and believing in Allah. If only the people of the book had faith, it would best for them. And I'll just stop there for a moment. If you think of what Allah is describing here, is that we are going to khaira ummah, we are the best of the Ummah, and we find that Ramadan provides us an opportunity to grow. But the things that follow, it's not about praying our Salah and about the Qur'an, but it takes it one step further. It says, enjoy right and forbid wrong, and believe in Allah. So we do these things as, as cognizant of our duty and consciousness or our taqwa to Allah, but we basically stand for what is right and forbid what is wrong. And whether it is within ourselves, within our families, and also in our societies, or more globally as well. So we pray that Allah grants us these last 10 days is a blessed period in which we grow our death and we continue our observations. But we also try and be much more conscious of our personality in terms of fairness and justice, grow it, so at the end of Ramadan we could truly achieve taqwa as it's not just internally derived, but something that benefits others and people could appreciate and be a light upon which people come to the to the uh, to the faith of Islam, inshallah. Jazakallah khair. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.